All right, let's do our crappy culture. So this, this time we have two uh, absurd pieces of music for our crappy culture because we're taking a visit to the op-ed uh, page of the New York Times, or as we call it, Knucklehead Row. Oh, hey, 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 hey. So an op-ed in the New York Times by Echo N. Yanka, a black guy is a professor at the Benjamin N. Cardozo School of Law at Yeshiva University. And the reason I mentioned that he's a black guy is his op-ed is called, Can My Children Be Friends with White People? And his answer is no. For African Americans, they swear. That's what he says. Race has become proxy not just for politics, but also for decency. White faces are swept together, ominous anxiety behind every chance encounter at the airport or smiling white cashier. Ooh, I hate those smiling white cashiers. They're the worst. If they are not clearly allies... They will seem unsafe to me. So that's his thing. You can be friends with white people if, if they support your politics, all right? He says, among my dearest friends, he, because his uh, wife is, he says, bi-ethnic, he calls her. He says, my bi-ethnic wife is my most trusted friend. She understands she is seen as a white woman, even though her brother and father are not. Among my dearest friends, the wedding party and children's godparents variety, many are white, but... But these are the friends who have marched in protest, rushed to airports to protest the president's travel ban, people who have shared the risks required by strength and decency. You know, my, I can't respond to this because there's certain things we're not allowed to say. I said, really, I only have a two-word response to this, and the second word is you. But here's the thing. This, this points out the fact that the, you know, people talk about why is the argument we're having so intense, so angry. And the reason is, is we're having two separate arguments. We on the right are talking about policies that we think will help everybody. Okay, we're talking about policies. We're t we are not making any, dis you know, any distinguishing. Uh, we're not distinguishing identities. We're not distinguishing women from men. We're not distinguishing blacks from whites. We are distinguishing women from men in the sense that I talked about at the beginning that they're different, and that therefore there may be some difference in treatment. But but in terms of policy, we're talking about things that we hope will help everybody. We hope it will bring peace to confront radical Islam. We hope it'll bring uh, more safety to close the border. We hope it'll uh, help you know, the economy to cut down on our extraordinarily high corporate tax rate. All those things are what we're talking about. We're talking about policies. They are talking about identity all the time. And what they don't like about Donald Trump is that some of his supporters are talking back in the same language. Here is Van Jones talking about Roy Moore, the left-wing commentator Van Jones, talking about Roy Moore and talking about what he sees on the right that's so shocking to him. Uh, we haven't mentioned Steve Bannon in this. But this is Bannonism on trial. Bannon is trying to create this sense of an aggrieved identity group, uh, frankly, a white aggrieved identity group that's under siege by everybody. <clears throat> and this is that in its worst form. So you're not supposed to vote as a father. You're not supposed to vote as a brother. You're not supposed to vote as a, as a, as a, as a woman. You're supposed to vote as a member of this identity group against the world. And if that works, that is very, very bad for the Republican Party. It's very, very bad for the country. <laughs> so what are you saying? That is that is the left wing whole their whole policy. That's everything. Vote as your group. And what Van Jones is complaining about is not that it's happening. He's complaining about the fact that the right is doing it. The right. When, what is your argument? If you tell people to vote as black people, if you tell people your children can't play with white people, you know, if you tell people to, that women have a right to vote as women, why can't men vote as men? Why can't white people vote as white people? The entire argument is wrong, and I reject their argument. And I accept the right. Obviously, I'm a right winger. I believe that we should have pol we should talk about policies only policies they should outlaw it, obviously i'm being facetious but they should not allow in political discussions words like racist sexist they, they don't matter they don't matter all that matters is policy and whether it works i know that's more wonky it's not as exciting it doesn't make as as much good tv but it really is what we should be talking about and that is why why our culture our political culture has become so crappy. I got to go. Tomorrow we have Cassie J. I'm really excited about this. She made this uh, documentary, The Red Pill, which started out being about – it started out being against, basically, the men's movement. And then she sort of said, wait a minute. These people have had a point. She took the red pill and stopped being a feminist or at least has turned away from that kind of feminism that we despise. I'm Andrew Claven. This is The Andrew Claven Show. Be there for that tomorrow.